Tina Dupuis is the managing editor of CrooksAndLiars.com. She's got a great new column out about uh, this obsession that many Republicans seem to have with amending the Constitution. And I have to say, Tina, I read the column. There's, I don't know that I would use the term obsession, but there's a lot of talk on the left also about amending the Constitution to overturn the effect of Citizens United. So it is on both sides, right? What's the difference? Well, I, I wouldn't say that. I would say that when Republicans want to amend the Constitution, they want to give people fewer rights. So they want women to have uh, the government subject them to, you know, uh, regulating their womb, which is the personhood amendment that they suggested on Saturday night at the Huckabee Forum. Uh, they want to take away the citizenship of children who are born here because of who their parents are, which is a throwback to an old English law called corruption of blood. Um, and uh, one of the many reasons we fought a war uh, so that we, we could stand on our own as human beings, as individuals, and not be judged and punished by the sins of our fathers. Uh, but they want to bring that back uh, as far as citizenship goes. That sounds uh, nice. So when we look at the uh, potential to actually amend the Constitution based on the requirements you said for uh, for uh, corporations are people, is that more likely or is that still a very, very big, big hill to climb? Well, it's actually, you know, in my opinion, both. Uh, we have uh, Democrats who say that they uh, support the amendment 70 percent, independents who say that they support it 70 percent, even Republicans. 60% of Republicans support this kind of amendment. So yes, I think that it is uh, uh, has a broad base of support, which could make it more likely. But also, anytime you amend the Constitution, this is like this is a huge endeavor that takes you know years. It's not something you just do over a weekend and go, "Wouldn't this be a fantastic idea?" And that was intentional. It was intended to be very deliberate and to make Americans come together and decide this. Uh, you know, with you know, a, a super majority across the country. So I, I think the answer to your question is really both. When talking to a lot of conservatives about the Constitution, at the mere suggestion that maybe not everything that was in the Constitution originally is particularly relevant today, there's so much anger. How could I possibly insult the, the sacred document of the Constitution? And it seems to be lost on a lot of these people that the, if the Constitution was perfect to start with, we wouldn't have had over 20 amendments to it already. And that, that seems to, number one, that seems to be pushed pushed aside. But but secondly, it, doesn't it stand to reason that when something is written at the very start of a country, changes may be necessary as that country goes from, from one phase through industrialization into kind of the, the, the phase we are now? Or am I, am I wrong about that? Am I insulting the Constitution? Right. Well, first off, you said reason and Republicans and Constitution in the same kind of couple of sentences there, which are a little incongruous in the first place. <laughs> right. um, I, yeah, it's like, I love the Second Amendment. The Second Amendment is the best amendment ever, and everything in the Constitution is perfect. And it's like, whoa, 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 check this out. The Second Amendment, not in the original Constitution, ratified later. Interesting enough. I know. I, I agree with that statement. And I think that we can have a reasonable discussion about the Constitution. Uh, but I think that this, you know, using uh, or pretending that the Constitution is scripture, that it's it's a holy text, uh, is uh, it's detrimental to our country. I think that the the founding fathers, a lot of them didn't agree with each other. So you were going to find a, fi a founding father who probably agrees with you. That doesn't mean that what they uh, thought got into the Constitution. I think that the founding fathers had no idea the country would last this long. They thought they would all be arrested in a couple of years and <laughs> executed. Uh, you know, they this like this would be really shocking to them. Also, that they were kind of deified would be uh, shocking to them. So, uh, yeah, no, I think that the 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 our mores have changed. Uh, you know how we view women have has changed. How we view minorities. How we view immigrants has changed. Uh, how we view England has changed. Uh, we were really, you know, kind of uh, ticked off at England, and now they're, you know, our our greatest ally and uh, we like them because they speak in English. So, you know, I mean, it's it. you're right. It stands to reason that, uh, you know, we should have a, a, a frank discussion uh, about this founding document and what that means, because right now, um, you know, at least what I'm hearing from the occupiers is that a lot of them really thought that if we had a, you know, a 
a community organizer from so Chicago's South Side, that, that that would fix everything. And everything that we had in trickle down economics and all this uh, uh, economic inequality that we've uh, suffered from in the last decade of uh, the last 10 years under the Bush administration would all be kind of made better because we would have this guy who the right promised was radical. Right. And, you know, the the other thing you mentioned also in there is founding fathers. And I think that's interesting because you refer to the Mike Huckabee uh, Republican Forum, whatever. I tuned into a little bit of it. And when Newt Gingrich was sitting in the chair, one of the questions from the incredibly uh, bizarre panel of three Republican attorneys general, which was just one of the strangest things I've ever seen. It was really weird. It was like, Obama is the worst thing that's ever happened. What do you think about that? It was. And one of the questions asked to Newt Gingrich was, who's your favorite founding father? And I just saw, thought it was it was such a bizarre question. I mean, it's like, what's your favorite Bible passage, which is the mere fact that the question is taken seriously suggests right. a real problem to me and how we're picking these presidential candidates. Right. David, what what is your favorite stripe on the flag? <laughs> right. It's the third white one down from the top. There you go. Like, yeah, no, it's 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 ridiculous. But I mean, it was it was supposed to be ridiculous. It was supposed to be, you know, um, this kind of uh, it's try. I guess it was trying to show Republicans that they really shouldn't be depressed about their candidates. Right. I don't really know what the softball questions were. I don't think that that actually helps the GOP in any meaningful way. I think that they should be much tougher on these candidates because they are going to go against an incumbent. Um, and if they really want to uh, win the the presidency, they can't just sabotage the nation. They actually might have to have someone that people can vote for. But, you know, I'm not a strategist. I, you know, I just report the facts. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And there was nothing more pathetic than the questions from that Pam Bondi, who, who seemed to be re- simply reading them and not even reading them very well. Strangest debate so far, but I think the Newsmax Trump debate might top it. We'll, we'll have to see. That's a wonderful Christmas present. Two days after Christmas, we'll all be, you know, in a sugar coma and then there'll be Trump. I mean, I can't, you know, there'll be sugar plums dancing in my head. Makes me glad I'm Jewish. I don't have to worry about Christmas presents like that. Uh, Tina Dupuy, managing editor of CrooksAndLiars.com. Keep up the good work. Good to see you. Thanks, David.